like what you said there about Stephen Cluxton, I mean, that situation is certainly a, uh, an interesting one as well because he was he was being reported as returning to training by a number of news outlets during the week and there was I think Liam Brady and off the ball there a couple of weeks ago was was fairly decisive in saying he retired so I don't know like I feel like someone's not speaking out somewhere like there's something happening here behind the scenes and we're just not getting the the full information yeah in some ways up for me I suppose I think it's if he is gone it's the way he wants to do it yeah. Um, no interview, no press, no nothing. Talk about me all you want. I couldn't care less. Um, it's very much in, in his demeanor, like, you know, as a his this way of his style, kind of that he's done it over the years, you know, very, you know, walking off the pitch after all our finals, you know, to come, come back out again, celebrate after, kind of very low key, I suppose, the way to describe him in life. Um, if it is the way he's gone. I think it's it's Stephen Cluxton 101 of how to retire, basically. You know, that's that's pretty much he's done it his way. And if if it is, um I, I think it could be, I think it could be the end of it because like which I know seven few of the lads have chatted with this before, like we did say, you know, years ago, will he come back next year? And we always said, you know, if he doesn't, well, he was not going to tell you he's not coming back. There's not going to be a big massive press release. And if it is, it'll only be, you know, to say thanks to the fans and thanks to everyone. There won't be like, you know. I want a testimonial, I want a a dinner, I want all this kind of thing. Like, it'll just be, you know, I'm gone, let me be, let me go back teaching in Glasnevin, you know, in September, that kind of thing, and that'll be it. So, um, huge loss of the game if it is. Like, still, I still think after 2004, like, the greatest GA moment I've ever had live was sitting in the front row of Crow Park behind him in 2011. I was sitting right behind him for that free against Kerry. I'll never forget it as long as I live. That was still one of the greatest moments I've ever had. Um, Surrounded by Dublin fans and one of my mates is a massive Dublin fan as well and just willing willing them to win like willing them to score because you know Dublin won nothing at that stage whereas now I'm like just I don't want you to win anymore I've had enough he kind of but uh, <laughs> yeah no still I'll always remember for, for that moment anyway one of the great moments of my life so yeah 100% I was at that final as well actually it was the only it was the only All Ireland final I've ever been to actually and it was um mm. yeah like I couldn't describe the uh, the yeah. emotions that, that yeah. what it was like on on Hill 16 I think probably the only thing that beats it was was Kevin McManaman's goal about 10 minutes <laughs> earlier but yeah, yeah like and I think as well because I remember when the, when the ball went over the bar and then I remember the whistle blew about 10 seconds later it was literally like you know the definition yeah. of scoring a, a last minute point or a last yeah. minute goal like it was um it was extraordinary stuff like and like do you think Dublin could even struggle maybe even without him like because I think we we don't know too much about Evan Comerford really like I've, I've seen him play a couple of times yeah. at Ballymun and he's uh he's a brilliant shot stopper to be fair to him not not fully convinced with his kickouts just yet in terms of he, he I mean look listen you're trying to replace probably the best of all time and we've seen mm. with goalkeepers down the years it's very hard to find a good one so do you think Dublin could maybe struggle a bit without him uh Probably maybe in like the leadership terms, that kind of thing, you know, mm. ruling the backs and letting them know like as as quiet as he is, a man off the pitch at the best of times, he's very, very commanding on the pitch and without without needing to tell everyone he's commanding. Like you often see if you're in Crow Park as well, especially like I've been fortunate to go to, you know, a lot of Dublin games in the last 15 years or so. And because I was a keeper myself, a very unsuccessful keeper, but I was a keeper myself, you know, back in the day and you, you love watching the keepers and how they do things. And after he'd, you know, kick the ball out, he'd still be pointing like, you know, cornerbacks, you know, pull back, push forward. Like he, he's very commanding. Evan Comerford is a lovely guy. He came into, came into our school actually randomly um, just before COVID and talked to the kids and everything. Lovely guy. Um, a lot of time for him, absolute gentleman. But at the same time, probably, as you said, doesn't have, doesn't definitely doesn't have that commanding thing that Cluxton has. But, probably will pick it up over time as well. Like to me anyway, it seemed like, you know, if you can come in in front of a, a school of 200 kids and, you know, act like you've been there all your life, there's no reason when you go on the pitch that you can't, you know, tell a few lads to shuffle around and, you know, you've got the vision to see it when you're standing in goals. So I, I think he could be, he could become a very a household name very quickly. Um, but he will have to gain that influence, you know, the skills of influence and all that. That will come with winning all Ireland's and, you know, hopefully, you know, for his sake, hopefully he gets to do it over the next number of years. It's just a case of whether whether he he learn more from winning, or you know, maybe somewhere along the line he might learn more in defeat, and that might make him a better player as well. So, yeah, but certainly, 
two left footers, you know, Dublin keepers for the next, you know, last 20 years and the next 20 years could be both left footers, you know, and I'm sure one can learn from the other. I'm sure Stephen Cluxton won't disappear forever. I'm sure there'll be a, be some turning up a training to help with a few kickouts here and there, I'm sure. Yeah, so I'd have to imagine so. Like he'll definitely, um, he'll definitely get involved in in what way he can. I don't know if I'd ever see him really go into a coaching role. I don't know if he's that type really. Like yeah. we said, he's very quiet. He's very private. I don't know if he'd really go into that. Um, but certainly it will be interesting to keep an eye on, on Evan Comerford mm-hmm. anyway, in particular, like over the over the next while. And one thing we've seen with Dublin down the years as well is like even when Jack McCaffrey opted out, there was a big kind of deal about that. Like, well, who are Liber- or who are Dublin going to play? Of course, at mm-hmm. uh, a wing back, and then in the end, in comes Robbie McDade and does a phenomenal yeah. job for Dublin. Just yeah. kind of slips under the radar, comes out of nowhere. So. Like with with Dublin in particular, they they even when players do retire, they always just seem to have that option there. Like they just they just they just always have it there. Yeah, it's just the the conveyor belt of talent, isn't it? What mm-hmm. they call it. So like like on our team, like if John Heslin gets injured, like where our retires, we're like, oh dear God, like who do we have to replace him? Whereas Dublin just have that kind of what would you call it basket of talent in some ways that they can call upon. So. Yeah, Jack McCaffrey was another one. Yeah, I remember when he um when he said that he was stepping away, everyone was like, "Oh my god, this is incredible!" And then most people who kind of suppose knew the Dublin team were like, "Look, there's there's any amount of lads who can step in here. So they mightn't be as quick as him, they mightn't be as skillful as him, but they learned the same way that he did. Like he, the year he broke onto the Dublin panel again, he came into our school to present awards at the end of the year, and he won the All Star. You know, pretty soon after, like it's not, it doesn't take long when you're on a successful team and a strong team and a well-run team to find your feet. Like even was it Pader Coffee Burn yesterday, whoever it was, you know, around the middle, like the guy is new enough in terms of championship and league football. He after 20 minutes, he looked like he's been playing there all his life. So I think I think you just need a good setup, and you know, Dublin is literally the ultimate setup. I think whoever whoever steps in, you know. Comerford and maybe might get a bit of a challenge possibly from a backup keeper or two I know um I can't remember the name was it was it Michael, Leonard Michael Shields Shields was it who was yeah. the guy Michael was Shields he backing up Cluxton yeah. yeah like you know you're kind of like you're kind of like um Steve Harper behind Shea Given at Newcastle for all those years <laughs> you know you're just sitting there wondering am I ever going to get a go and then Cluxton retires and suddenly you know you still don't get a go so yeah yeah um, it could be a case of that. Hopefully, there'll be a bit of competition for the goals with Comerford as well. It always makes for for an interesting one. Yeah, definitely. Like definitely, will, will be one worth uh, keeping an eye on.